All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, live, driven, and powered by Go Chevrolet, online at G-E-A-U-X, Chevrolet.com. Remember, you can find them there. They're in Laplace and Baton Rouge. Stories everywhere in college football. The top four have been named. Alabama is in. Cincinnati is in. Michigan is in. Georgia is staying there. We'll talk all about it coming up here on the Jordy Collada Show, but we want to get to you with Mickey Joseph. Former LSU wide receivers coach now going back to the college in which he dominated. Nebraska coming out of New Orleans as the number one player. Has been on the LSU staff for the last five seasons. He's the associate, uh, was the associate head football coach and really in charge of, uh, of recruiting uh, a lot of the big time players that have come through here the past couple of seasons, including uh, some of these first round wide receivers that we're seeing making plays every single day like Jamar Chase and Terrace Marshall. It seems like Kayshawn Butte will be next. Brian Thomas is another star that looks like he is in the making. Malik Neighbors, all those guys run to the tutelage of Mickey Joseph the last couple of seasons, and we're looking forward to some insight here on the Jordy Collada Show. Coach, good, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for the time. How are you? Jordan, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Uh, it is great to catch up with you, man, as uh, I know the, uh, the last couple of seasons have, uh, have been a hell of a ride, and... 2019 was a was a magical uh, run, uh, but if you could, how would you how would you analyze how would you summarize the last five years? Well, you know, you know, we had some up and downs, you know, but like I said, LSU has been a great place, you know, the work the work to work at, and LSU has been great to me, been great to my family, my wife and my kids really enjoyed it, you know, here, and I think that um, I think that we wouldn't we wouldn't trade these numbers. You know, it's good memories. It's good to come back home and experience the LSU atmosphere. You know, didn't come here out of college, you know, and you know, not returning back to my alma mater, but I'm just saying that we wouldn't trade these memories. You know, it's been good memories. People have been good to us. And um, like you said, every day we went in that building, we gave LSU everything we had. And, um, you know, we're not. I'm not leaving the room, you know, naked. I'm leaving it loaded for them. Oh, well, I mean, unbelievably loaded, Coach. And I wanted to talk about some of the players that have come through here under the in the last five years. In fact, we're watching Sunday Night Football right now inside of the uh, inside of the studio, and we're watching Clyde Edwards-Alaire making plays uh, with Tyron yep. Matthew on defense. All these guys at LSU, but Clyde's been there the last five years. Um, how good have the players been? Just from somebody who analyzes, recruits, coaches players at this level, uh, have you seen come through the program? Uh, since since you guys have been there, well, you know, first of all, you know, we we had some great kids come through with great character. You know, in, in in the last three years, I don't think we had any any mishaps off the field. You know, I don't think we have. But we, you know, we did a great job of analyzing these kids for as you know they, they character. You know, um, Jack Jack's big on that. You know, he brings that type of attention a lot, and I think O understood that, and O wanted to do the same thing. We didn't want to bring kids in there. That wasn't going to do things the LSU way, and I think we had some great players come through here. And take your hat off to those kids; they were team players. Because we never put it about the individual; we always put it about the team. So there were some really great players come through with great attitudes. And um, you know, the, the 19 team was loaded with NFL talent. And, you know, people always say, "Oh, y'all, y'all, you know, y'all had great talent." Well, you know, at the end of the day, I, I would tell people, "Don't say that because that's how you win. You, you don't, you don't win with." Average players, just the only thing you can say about him is that he's tough, you know. But you know, you win with you win with good players, and, and you win with good coaches, you know. And, and it's a combination. And we had some really good players, and we had some really good coaches. So you know, we were able to win the national championship. And you know, the last two years haven't been up to the LSU standard of performance. And we understood that, you know. I mean, coach understood that. He knew, yeah, hey, you got to win here. You know, it's five and five. That's not acceptable. Six and six is not acceptable. You know, and we understand that. And LSU has the right to make a change when, when they think it's not acceptable. How much from the your point of view, associate head coach, how demanding is the LSU job? Oh, I always say it's a pressure cooker. It's something I always going to go down with it. You know, you, 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 you play on Saturdays, you're going to get everybody best, 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 um, best lick. You know, I mean, LSU's a, a like I said, he's a, Standard, you know, the school, you know, the standard is high here. And, you know, it's really high in, 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 you know, the fan base and the university. They want you to hit it. You know, they don't want you to hit it. I mean, you know, at LSU, they think you shouldn't lose a game. Right. You know, some of the talent, you know, you, you know, but 
other people have talent too, you know, but it's just, it's, it's a, um, it's a high standard. They, the standards are really high here and, and, and you got to meet it. You got to meet it. You know, if you don't meet it, you, you know, you'll be like us. You won't be here. Yeah. You know, because they have their mind made up and they have that right. They have that right. They have that right to be like that because at the day it is LSU. How much competitive or how have you seen the conference get better over the last five years? I mean, it's never a week off in the SEC. You know, I don't, I don't care if you play in Arkansas. I don't care if you play in Kentucky, Vanderbilt. You, you get ready. This, this, this conference has gotten better and better because you know because of the coaching and because of the great players that that want to come play in this league. You know, and and you, you can't take it away from the league. It's probably one of the better leagues in the country. You know, I mean, I think what we got two in the finals this year. Yeah. You know, so it's always going to happen like that. You know, because at the end of the day, you know, everybody wants to play in the SEC. We are biased. You're in the game. Do you have any explanation on why Damone Clark didn't win the Buckus Award? I don't know. I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't know it was, it was going on. But I'll tell you that you know, in my mind, boy, he. I mean, this, this, this kid, you know, this kid did a hell of a job. You know, with with, with you know Durante's scheme and Blake Baker. You know, coming in with this kid, this kid, this kid was the ninth ninth. So he 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 flipped the slit switch. I mean, he always had the he always had the um the talent. You yeah. know, he had to clean up some things, and he did it. He's a very a respectful kid. But I, I love talking to him all, you know, because he loves his baby girl. You know, and and that's what he played for. Yeah. That's what, and that kid did everything right, and that's what showed you kids can come here and get three point and and be great football players. You know, and, and and he's a hometown kid. So he's going. He's going to benefit from this. He might not win the bucket, but he's going to get drafted from LSU. Yeah, and he's going to. Um, and he's and he's going to graduate from LSU. I don't know if there's. So he, a, no, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. It's a win-win for him. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's a college football player in the country that made more money this season by coming back and showing what he did this year more than Damone Clark did. I mean, he 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 just shot up draft boards. I, I'd imagine. Um, yeah, coach. I, I know that nobody will feel sorry for you guys in, in the industry. Um, that they know that that you guys make a ton of money and you, you you get a lot of glory and you see a lot of cool things, but but can you can can you tell the listeners and, and kind of give insight to what the life of a coach is for for kind of times like this where, you know, what the last maybe six months or or at least four three months have been like just as a coach when it's when it's unstable times. Well, the, the big thing is that. You know, you, you, you got to coach to the end. You know, you got to coach to the end. And, and if you've been in, if you're in this profession long enough, you know it's going to happen. Uh-huh. You know, you know, you know, there's two type of coaches one that's been fired and one that's about to get fired. <laughs> right. Right. You know? Right. So, so understand that. But the life of a coach is that you sacrifice your family. Mm-hmm. You know, and oh, and oh was good about family. If you had something to do with your kids, you, you know, your family, he was let go. Didn't no matter what, he was let go. But but you sacrifice your family. You you put your you put this you put this university football team first in front of your family. And everybody, oh, you make a lot of money. Yeah, but it's like you said, it's families involved, it's kids involved in it. Mm-hmm. You know, so when 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 people start blasting you, and your kids got to hear that. So so it makes your kids. Grew up a little differently than the kid next door. Absolutely, you know, because some sometimes they don't want to go to school on Monday because you lost mm-hmm. the game on Saturday. You know, and, I, and that's the only, and that's the only thing I tell fans is like, just remember, it's little, it's kids involved in when you're you talking about entertainment. This is entertainment, Joey. This is it's not life or death. It's entertainment. Right. I always tell them that uh, if the world's about to end tomorrow, they ain't going to get the best football coach. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> they not, they're going to get that scientist. They're going to get that dude that know what, you know, they're not doing that. You know, and then football's a small, I tell my kids this, football's a small part of life once you're done with it. The big part of life is family. The big part of life is family. Football's a small part. And you might be here and you might say, man, it's, a, it's the end of the world. We're going to win and lose this game. Mm-hmm. No. You know, it's the end of the world if you lose your mom, you lose your dad, you lose it, you know, you you lose a family member. Not that football game. You, once you gave your all and gave everything on the field, you know, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. 
Mm-hmm. But the but you know the pressure as a coach is that it's always a roller coaster, and it's not just you on a roller coaster; it's your family. You know, I I got to pick up. I got to pick up and move a family. Mm-hmm. You know, you know I got a kid that loves those school at Dunham Dunham High School, Dunham Dunham School. You know, but she got to pick up. And guess what? She's six, and she understands that. A six year old understands that. Wow. Think about that. Yeah. She's six, and she understands like dad didn't get it done, so dad's got to move us to another job and hope he can get it done there. And that's why you stay ahead of this thing. That's why you stay ahead of it when, 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 you know, when you know you're about to get let go. You got to do two things. You got to be looking for a job and you got to be trying to get ready for that game Saturday. Hmm. Cause at the end of the day, when you're going from here, nobody going to think about, about what my, what's going on with my family. If my family's surviving, because they're going to move on to the next coach in which they should, because that's the way this profession is. I always say this. It's a great profession. It's an ugly business, Yeah, but we, we choose to be in it. So we understand it. So, Hey, it is what it is, but that's the truth. Yeah, for sure. Mickey Joseph joining us here, uh, former associate head coach for the LSU Tigers, now a part of uh, the Nebraska coaching staff, a place that he played and has gone after him a couple of times. That's why, Coach, I wasn't surprised when when, when Brian Kelly was announced and he said that he was hoping to land a couple of his assistants from Notre Dame, but when Marcus Freeman was named head coach and he kept the staff in place, you don't have to uproot your family, you don't have to move across the country, and it was really kind of a – a decision that was probably very easy for those guys, just from a personal standpoint. Um, how, how do you think Kelly will do here? What did you what, what What did you think when he was announced? Well, I mean, BK, he don't want every way he went. Mm-hmm. You know, he don't want every way he went. You know, the challenge is going to be now is the SEC. That's the challenge. Yeah, that's the challenge for any coach that takes the job in that. You know, I mean, BK, he's a he's a bet he's a bet at this. He 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 knows he, he knows what 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 what, what 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 he needs to do down here, you know. But like I said, wherever he went, he had a winning plan. So I think everybody's got to sit back, be patient, and let him and let him put his plan in effect and and, and support him, you know. Because at the end of the day, you know, no nobody's bitter about not not being able to stay because he has that right to as a, as a coach coming in to put the people around him that that he he trusts that knows his plan, and you know, because his plan, you know, he has a plan. I mean, he don't want every way he went, you know. And the, and the challenge now is going to be now you got you got to show that you can win in the SEC. I think he's going to be able to do it. You know, he's talented in that building, you know, and I think he's going to do a good job of recruiting. He's going to do a good job of, uh, you know, getting with the kids and relating. I mean, people say, oh, he's never been down here. But that's okay. You know, that's okay if he's never been down here. It's still America. It's still the United States. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know. so he, he'll get adjusted. He, he's a little red beans here and there, a little gumbo, and, <laughs> and he'll be fine. You know, because let me tell you what, what we left in that building. We left great kids in that building. Uh-huh. We left great kids in that building. So he's he's coming into a, not not a knucklehead team. He's coming into a good football team, a good football team for his good character kids. So you know it's it's not like he's coming in. He's going to you know fight the battle that they are really not they, they're bad kids. They're not bad kids. They're great kids it's because that's what old that's what old demanded us to do. Find great kids. If they had any red flags, I promise you, he gets up out of his chair and oh, you just take them off the board. You know, and make it easy on you. You know, make it easy on you. Yeah. And, and and once he gets to, once he gets to, you know, get some guys around him, and and he's gonna be fine. I think he's gonna be okay. I think you know, he'll win. You know, he'll win. How good can Kayshawn be, or how good is he? Mm. I think Kayshawn's a top ten pick. Mm-hmm. You know, I said you know I said it with Jamar. I said it with Justin. I thought Justin should have been a top ten pick. And you saw yeah. what he did after his rookie year. He should have been the first receiver taken. You know, but they make mistakes in the NFL, you know. But, you know, Jamar's doing what he has to do. But I think Kishon can be just as good as any of those guys. You know, I thought if Kishon can stays healthy, we we back in Tallahassee at the Belitney Cup. Mm-hmm. You know, he's mm-hmm. going to win it, you mm-hmm. know. But one thing about Kishon, and let me explain something about this kid. This this kid's a total team player. Total team player, you know. He, he never came in on Sunday and said, hey, I didn't get enough touches. You know, I, I need to do this. I need to do that. You know, when we say we had to put those young kids on the field, Brian Thomas and Deion at X, he did the same thing Justin did. He said, I'll go to F and I'll, and I'll move inside. Guys, he just got finished leading us in receiving. Same right. thing Justin did. Right. And, and he goes inside. But let me tell you, yo, that's the culture of that room. That's the culture of that team that is about winning as a team. And 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 that that's what BK did. Kids like that, you know. This kid's a warrior. He gets after. It. He gets after you. You know. I remember when he came in as a freshman, Jamar. He was behind Jamar. 
But this dude showed up every day trying to beat Jamar out. You know? Right. Trying to beat him out. Yeah. And, and I, you know me, I'm egging it on. Sure. I'm like, get after him, Kishon. He can't, he's not better than you. <laughs> right. You know? Right. Right. <laughs> you know, get after him. Right. You know? And, you know, at the end of the day, the kid believed it. You know? The kid believed it. How so, good, how, you know. How good are the story? Go how good are the stories from the practice field that you've seen over the last couple of years? The Stingley, Jamar, the... The, the 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 battles that you've seen. Oh, coach, I've seen DJ Chark and and and, and D Jack. Uh -huh. You know, you, you see Stingley and Jamar. You know, you see Greedy and Terrace. So you don't see some. You know, you see NFL guys getting after. You know, and guys on Tuesdays we had 15 minutes with the DBs and receivers. We had 15 minutes to ourselves. We did all kind of stuff. Stacks, mm -hmm. stuff, start blocking. They got after each other. And that and that's a competitive period. The one on ones was a competitive period on Tuesday because it was for fifteen minutes, you know. And we, and we broke it up. But I'm just telling you that you seen a whole, you seen just great players, Russell Gage, you know. You you see guys like that, you know. And, you know, I have Justin Jefferson, you know, and just just Corns, you know, Tolliver. I just can go up and down the list, you know. You know, even even you know, just with Delpit, you know, covering Justin in the slot, you know, you know. And it, it just it was it was a great feeling just to see those kids come on and compete every day. When did you know Joe Burrow was Joe Burrow? I think I knew that, and I, I was telling I was telling Jaquez this on the interview the other day. I think I knew that when, when we played Miami and Dallas, and, and the coaches go down kind of early before the um, before the call out session when we call the special teams up, and we you know we get a little rowdy in there. And Joe was the first one down there. And he dapped every one of his teammates off. Remember, Joe got there in gym, you know? So he dapped every one of his teammates off, just shaking their hand as they went into to the call-out session. And I guarantee you, Joe didn't know all those kids' names. Sure. But he was showing right then and there that I'm going to lead this team. And I think right there, that's when those kids was like, you know what, we're going to follow this dude, you know? We're going to follow this dude. And, and and he and he was the truth, man. He was the truth. He was yeah. a he's a fierce leader. He was a kid that was a tough kid from Ohio, and he, and, and and the kids knew he was tough. And you know, it was, if it was a fight on the field, he was the first one in it. He was the last one to leave. You know, and that's that's what you respect about Joe. And that's what we know he was special. I thought I knew he was special that game, when, the Miami game, when he shook everybody's hand. You know, and and I said, this kid's gonna be good. You know. Um. How how good of a leader was he from a football standpoint? I know that everybody has their stories, but like just the day in day out stuff that you guys want your players to have. How much did he have it in spades? And when did you kind of see that? Like guys, this guy, he might be a little different than the rest of them. He came up every day. Mm -hmm. He came up every day like he was a coach. He met with Steve Ensmeg and Joe Brady every day. You know, when Joe Brady was in here in eighteen, he came up. He met. He met with. Munoz, and he met with Steve. He's always in the building. He was in the building more than me. He used to beat me there on Sunday sometimes. I used to get there at 10, because I'm like, sure, I didn't get out of here to 1. I used to be there at 10. He'll, and I said, Joe, what time you got here at 9? Ah, he beat me again. Right. So he used to beat some of the coaches in, you know, and you know, because we had late nights. But he used to, you know, get up and get in there, and, and the kid was well prepared. And, and, and the things, the adjustments that he wanted to make on game day made sense. Made sense. You know, so this kid was a true leader. Mentally, this kid's probably one of the, the smartest quarterbacks I've been around, you know, and I'm sure the NFL is saying the same thing. This kid can process well. He understands things. He can see it, and he can deliver it. Have you that's ever – thing about him. I'm sorry. Have you ever had a quarterback like that or anybody on your on your team kind of like that to where you're like, this guy is unbelievable. It, it, it's, it's kind of like having an NFL quarterback as a junior in college. Yeah, and, and that's what it was like, you know, and – you know, and, and that's what it was like. You know, I mean, just look at the the, the two kids that he um who he competed with that he transferred because they beat it. They said they beat him out. I don't think they still in the league. <laughs> they out in the league. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so I'm right. telling you, sometimes sometimes you got to look past that four star and five star. Yeah. And sometimes you just got to say, okay, who's the better football player? And if you look at those three quarterbacks, you probably say Joe was the better football player. Probably not the better athlete, the better football player. You know, and to be a football player, you got to be mentally tough, you got to be physically tough, and you got to be able to process fast. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that kid has all three. Um, what was the offensive dynamic like in 19? What was that room like with Ensminger, Brady, you, um, Burrow, uh, yeah, Tommy Robinson? What, what was that room like when you guys would kind of get together and collaborate? Well, I mean, I, I, I thought everybody did their part. You know, Ensminger gave us, you know, things that he wanted us to work with, you know, and, you know, Joe was Joe was working with third down and red zone, and so I did most third down and red zone with Joe and, and then the RPOs, you know, did the RPOs and did the um, first and second down, normal down throws, you know. But we had a great, we had a great group, you know. We had George Munoz in there, and also, you know, so we had a great group. We had, you know, Tommy really understood the run game and protections. So we had a great group. We all worked together, you know. No, they had, but the one thing they didn't, they didn't have any egos. Mm-hmm. No egos, you know. Steve Ensmer is one of the best dudes I've ever been around. He's like a brother to me, you know. No egos. He told you know when he, he pulled me in. He taught me this game. You know when I came in from Louisiana Tech to LSU. Steve Ensminger was the first one to pull me in and talk to me. You know, and he was talking to me like he knew me for years. You know, and, and and me and him just you know him and I we just had a relationship. You know, and I um you know and that's that's the thing about it. You know, we just had great relationships that year. Not that we hadn't didn't have great relationships in twenty and in twenty twenty one because you know we had great relationship when 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 the Jerry when Jerry was there. Mm-hmm. When Jerry was here and Scott was here, we had a good relationship. But in 19, it just clicked. It just clicked, you know. And and I I just think that right now, you know, they better try to call Brady up. <laughs> <laughs> Were you surprised you know, to see that news today? You no, know, yeah. My, my 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 people was telling me they were calling me. And it was like, hey, Brady got got snapped today. I was like, huh? You know, I didn't I didn't see it coming. But I'm just telling you, like, he has a relationship. You know, with the, with the kids in the room, you know, he has a relationship with the kids on offense, and you know, he's a he's a he's a guy that understands the LSU culture, you know. And I think, you know, I think, you know, is a, is a you know, is a guy you probably should look at to bring back because he 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 understands what we need to do here. Do you think he goes back to college? I don't know, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe. I mean, because Joe's young. Joe, you know, Joe was a, Joe was a better recruiter than he thought. You know, Joe didn't, yeah. Joe didn't, you know, I'm like, Joe, you're a really good recruiter because Joe's got a great personality. You know, he's open. You know, he he, underst- he understands different cultures, you know, but he, he had a great personality. But Joe was a really good recruiter. I know people didn't think he wasn't, but he was a really good recruiter. He identified with these kids. You know, he identified. He wasn't intimidated when he walked in that room with Terrence and Jamar. He just came from the Saints. But Joe, Joe understands how to get things done on the college level. I mean, he went to the NFL because that's where he came from. Yeah. But I just think, you know, he, you know, he understands how to get things done on the college level. He understands, he really understands that. What did you get to know about Brad Davis, and what do you think about the situation he's in right now as the interim going into the bowl? Well, you know what, Brad, uh, Brad's a, a a a good friend of mine. You know, fraternity brothers and. You know, when he, when it was time for him to come over here, I made a call to him, and you know, I recruited him back here. So I felt bad that this happened like this, but I think the situation he is he's in right now is that he he has a full control of that room, full control of that room, and and I think that he's he's one of the guys that you know BK probably should sit down with and talk with mm. because because he he's a great recruiter, he's from Baton Rouge, he loves LSU, he wants to be here at LSU. He, he don't say that to me, and I think he's going to do a great job as an interim head coach. You know, I think he's going to do a really good job, you know, because he, he, he knows how to relate to the kids. He's going to communicate well with the coaches, and he's going to do a great job. And I think they're going to be fine in a bowl game under his leadership. You know, I think he'll do good for this next month. Because it's going to be a month. I don't know where they play, January 4th, something yeah, like January that. January 4th, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's going to be a month. So, he'll, you know, he'll lead him, and I'm sure BK will be out there to help him. You know, but I think Brad's a Brad's a guy that you know that's a good role for him, and I and I hope I hope, I hope they keep him. Hope they keep him. You know, because you, like I said, you know, I I try to I recruited him back here, talked to him about coming back here. And, you know, it didn't last long. You yeah. know, so you feel bad. With, you feel bad when when things like that happen. But like you say, it's part of the profession. Um, Scott Frost has been on your trail for a long time. He's thrown some money at you. He's thrown titles at you. He's been trying to get you back to your alma mater. What's it mean to go back to, to Lincoln right now, and, and what's the expectation for you, and what's next? Well, like I told Scott, I said, Scott, you know, I understand, you know, that you need to win, and I think that he will win. We will win next year. And, um, and the, the thing about Scott is I understand that 
I see that Scott has his program going in the right direction. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he lost a lot of close games, you know, so, you know, he's going to sit back and figure out why he lost those games. But Scott's a, uh, you know, a, a, a young head coach, but he's done a great job at UCF. He's going to do, you know, we're going to get this thing going in Nebraska. We're going to get it going. That's one reason I said I would go. I went, I went two reasons. I, I knew Scott had this thing going in the right direction. And, and at the end of the day, it's my school. And I wouldn't be talking to you today right now, Jody, if it wasn't for the University of Nebraska and, and Tom Osborne and that fan base. Hmm. You know, and I, I wouldn't be talking to you today because at the end of the day, when we were at Nebraska and we went to Nebraska, I never talked about leaving Nebraska. Yeah. And, and that's one of my big things when I start bringing kids up from down south, that they're not going to leave. You know, because I'm going to be the one to tell them, like, hey, I, I went to the same field as you're going through right now. Yeah. You know, and I and I know how when I left that place, that was a great place, and it's what what thirty years later, I said it's a wonderful place. I already looked at it. Three and eight, they were three and eight against Iowa. They got over ninety thousand fans in the stadium. What you know? What did do that at? <laughs> what <laughs> did do that at? <laughs> yeah, right, it's the <laughs> only know, spot. You know, yeah, you know, and that's what I'm saying. So you know, you got ninety thousand. Yeah. You know, and you're three and eight. So I think the the ceiling is high. I think that. um you know, we, we we got some kids in the building that can play. You know, we'll add some we'll add some kids. You know, add some kids in to help us, and um and I think we're gonna be fine next year. I think you know, like Scott's got this thing. He's got a good plan, and we're gonna stick to the plan, and we're, and we're gonna win some football games. You've seen Terrace and Jamar and that class come through here. How special? I know we can't talk names because you're on a staff right now, but you've been recruiting the state as as hard as anybody. How special is the state in 22? Oh, it's special, you know. It's special. I mean, it's a, it's, it's special. It's, it's it's a lot of good players, you know. It's a lot of good players, and 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 um, it, it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be a, a battle for them, mm-hmm. you know, because everybody's in here trying to get them, you know. And that's what you got you got to do. You got you gonna have to you gonna have to sit that in and, and fight them all, you know. You got to fight them all, you know. You got to fight them all because they're gonna come in here. They're gonna try to get them. Uh, what's it like recruiting against Alabama, Georgia, Florida, Texas A and M? What, what, what's that like day in, day out? I mean, what, what keeps you up at night in recruiting against them? That day up recruiting, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> 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 you know, yeah. and, and, and it does. Yeah. I mean, it does. And, and our stuff is this. Yeah, I say, you know, if, if you're going to win a battle, you know, you got a good player. You know, you got to beat Alabama. You got to beat Georgia. You got to beat Texas A and M. But now, now you got to beat Auburn. Mm. You know, now you got to you got to fight off Kentucky. When Napier is going to Florida, you got to fight you got to fight off Florida now. You know, it, it, it's some things you got to do. You know, Arkansas, shoot, they're doing a great job down there. Yeah. You know, so you you got to fight everybody off. You know, so you can't take for granted that a kid just say he's coming. You got to you gonna have to recruit him. Mm. And, and, and listen, it was battles. It's, it's yeah. being up being up. You know, I remember Jamar. You know, the night before, he's saying, "Hey, I'm good." And then an hour later, it was Auburn, oh, you know. But it was it was it was, it was Mama Talia said, you know, hey, stop calling my house, <laughs> you know, you know, because because you couldn't be out. So guess what, you know, you you got to battle those schools. You got to battle Jimbo at Texas A&M because he he knows the league better than anybody. So you know, you, you know, Nick Nick's relentless at recruiting. Mm-hmm. You got to battle those guys. You got to battle Kirby. He comes under that same tree as Nick. You know, he comes under the tree, Nick. You know, Nick Nick's tree. I mean. So you, you got to battle those guys, you know, and, and, and we were able to do it here at LSU. We, especially in-state kids, you know, if, if we wanted them, we got them. You know, if we wanted them, we got them. And that's one thing we did. We put a fence around Louisiana. I know I had to put a fence around New Orleans, you know, but we, we put a fence around Louisiana. You know, if we wanted we got them, you know. And, and, and that's, how, that's how it's got to stay. It's got to stay that way. Um. 21 years in any profession is incredible. 21 years in college football at the same place seems like an eternity. How good is Moffitt at what he does, and what did he bring to the the, 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 the facility every day? Well, Moffitt's probably one of the best guy, best strength coaches I've been around, you know, you know, just for his, the knowledge knowledge of what's going on. And he brought energy. He brought energy in that building every day. And one thing he did, he told those kids the truth. Told him what was that. Told him what was going on, and they believed in him. And um, you know, you hate to see him go, but like I say, you know, he understands that he had a good run. He had mm-hmm. a good run. Mm-hmm. You know, because right now in these days, nobody stays at jobs past That's ten right. years. That's right. 
Think yeah. about it. Uh-huh. They stay after shooting. Ten years, you ten years. You know the fans. They get bored. They want somebody else in there. Mm-hmm. You know, the mafia did 20, 20 plus years, man. You take that off the mafia. Mafia always had us strong. Always had us fast. Always had us in shape. You know, and you know. So hey, he'll 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 go. He'll get he'll get other jobs. He'll get other chances. Yeah. He has a proven resume. You know, he has a proven resume. You know, and, and but the thing about it, people always say you never worry about the head job, the head guys. You worry about those assistants. You know. Mm-hmm. That they're gonna find something. So you always, as a head guy, when you get let go, you try to find something so you can get your sisters on that make sure they have something. You know, so um, Mafia's gonna be fine. You know, I think Mafia's gonna work again. I think those sisters gonna work again. But this 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 part of this part of profession, you know, yeah. change. Um, I appreciate your friendship, man. Over the last five years, getting to know oh, you, I been appreciate really cool, you man. too, man. man. It's been really oh cool. yeah, it's been cool, and, and I. Um, We'll be in, we'll be in touch. Absolutely, you know, 100%. we'll be in touch. And um, you ever want to get up to Lincoln for a game? You just let me know. Absolutely, you know, I will hey. do that, Coach. I will do that. Thank you very much for the information and the time this afternoon. I think I hate taking away uh, family time on a Sunday night, but we appreciate you and uh, best of luck. We'll talk soon. Well, I like always say, um, you know, go Tigers, but now it's, um, go Big Red. Absolutely, baby. It's good to see number two backing right. up in Lincoln. See you, man. Yes, sir. All right, there is uh, Mickey Joseph.